Howdy, everybody. It's Jonas and G from Tech Ranch. We're back at you talking about, uh, hey, hey, G, we're talking about some, uh, some uh, thought leadership that you've pub published recently on the blog, right? Uh, a posting that you wrote called The View Behind the Valuation Veil. That's right? right. So tell us, what is the valuation veil and what's the view behind it and why should entrepreneurs care? Well, I think over my years working for a VC firm, I've come to realize that entrepreneurs tend to regard the valuation number as sort of the big highlight during a negotiation. And it, they get to a point where they start obsessing about the numbers so much that I've seen negotiations literally drop off the table just because of that particular number. And what I wanted to bring out in that article or the post was basically that there's more to a term sheet negotiation than just the valuation. Mm -hmm. um, I think it comes down to the question of valuation versus control because there are a lot of terms in the term sheet that have control elements to them. So what the entrepreneur does is assumes that if, I, if they have a significant stake in their company, like 51% or something, they have a controlling stake and so they can control how the company is run, right. but in reality that's not true. Okay. Because there are terms in the term sheet that allows the investor more control, sometimes more than how much what the founder would want with respect to how the company is being run. Right. So that's what I wanted to bring out in that post. So sometimes um, like the investor doesn't necessarily want control of the company unless they need to take control of the company. Right, so it, it could right. be times you know when the, when there's an issue, right. the investor wants to be able to wield their 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 clout. Absolutely, and I think uh, what ends up happening is having seen ha um, as I think in your previous blog, you know that I work for a startup and also for a VC firm, and one thing I've come to realize that a lot of terms in the uh, VC term sheet are not necessarily evil. They they're there because. The VCs have learned over time from bad experiences that they have had right. that they wanted to put in certain you know checkpoints to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Okay. Okay. Um, and yes, they they're not there to like they believe that the founder they believe in the team that's why they invest in the company. Right. But at the end of the day, they need to have some kind of trigger which says which helps them to keep track of their investment at the end of the day. So what are what are some of the key terms that entrepreneurs should be aware of during this process? Uh, sure. Um, liquidation preference is okay. one. What does that mean? Liquidation preference, I think a lot of entrepreneurs misconstrue that when you hear the term liquidation, you always think, oh, it's in the event of a bad you know, scenario when you go bankrupt or something like that. But the liquidation preference in the term sheet refers to any liquidity event except for an IPO. Uh, so it can even be an M and A type right. event yep. where you know the investor basically gets liquidity, um, and what happens is they would say, okay, the typical norm is to say one x plus dividend or something like that, uh, but they can end up saying during right after the bubble time, there were term sheets which would even have ten x, so that's like dipping into their return ten times. Right. Uh, so it might end up being that even in a successful scenario, the founder would walk away with nothing because right. the preferred shares, you know, shareholders would get the preference. Right, so that means like uh, if I see a, a, a term sheet that says uh, my investor is asking for two times uh, uh, their investment, right? right. Uh, essentially, I'm going to have to pay them out 200% of whatever they put in right. before the common shareholders get to participate? That's Is that right. how that works? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What are, are there any other key terms that you would point out? Um, another one is anti-dilution. And uh, the reason I bring that up is a lot of entrepreneurs get so hyped up if they get a high valuation. Um, what they don't realize is your valuation should always reflect market value or what is the perceived market value. Um, and what ends up happening in a private company is that when you go for subsequent rounds of funding, if the economy is not good like it is right now, you might end up with a down round mm -hmm. where your valuation goes down. 
and VCs are prior investors, not necessarily VCs. Anybody who has a preferred term in the in the term sheet um, would say, "Hey, I need to protect myself in such a scenario, right? Because basically, I'm losing control. I'm losing the stake in the company. So what happens is." they put in this clause to make sure that their stake does not get overly diluted. Mm -hmm. um, and what ends up happening in that is if, if in such an event, such a down round, uh, it triggers more issue of shares and usually who ends up being diluted in this case would be the founders and the right. common shareholders. That's right. Right. So again, you know, just because you got a high valuation in the first round, it doesn't mean it's a good thing, right? So right. you need to be aware of what, what other terms that are, that are there in the term sheet and how to evaluate them as a whole as opposed to just one individual term. Sure. So uh, uh, the, the partners here at TechRanch, right, mm -hmm. we're always available for, for companies who are thinking through these kinds of issues, right? Absolutely. If your company is uh, getting a seed round going and you're wondering about what some of those terms are that the investors are presenting to you. Um, or if you're moving on to a Series A and trying to figure out what valuation models are looking like these days, you know, come come uh, send us an email here at Tech Ranch or uh, come to one of our events, and we'll be glad to schedule some time, sit down with you, right. uh, and have those kinds of conversations. Right. And only thing I would like to add is that there's no template or a, there's no formula for a successful term sheet. It's independent of the company and the VC mm -hmm. together or the investor together. So you need to look at all the terms and what's right for the company at that point in time when you agree on a term sheet. Great. All right, well, uh, join us next time for, uh, for another interesting discussion. Uh, I'm sure G, G will be back regularly here talking about the ins and outs of venture capital and uh, all of the kinds of cool things. Thanks, Jim. Okay.